you're looking live not so live underneath the 88 Mustang aka Frankie on this episode of the 89 garage and today we're gonna to be tackling the fuel filter the fuel pump the fuel sending unit and the grommet on the side of the tank where the fuel filler neck goes in. So please tune in, like, share, subscribe. I'm going to give you two seconds right now to subscribe. All right, maybe that was five. So today, I'm going to climb under Frankus here and take care of some of the fuel issues we got. Uh, fuel filter, fuel pump, as well as the sock. And also, I don't know if I've mentioned that, I think maybe I have, the fuel gauge reads empty all the time, or right above empty, something like that. Uh, anyway, it's not working, so I'm going to replace the sending unit while I'm in there and hopefully I don't find any you know any more Easter eggs where I gotta spend more money because that's the way Frankie rolls I already know what you're asking what are we working with today we're working with the Napa Pro Select commercial filter this is a just an eBay special these uh, pieces next two pieces are actually made by Airtex for CarQuest and that is the sock and here's our pump uh, my suspicion Okay, before we even get into this, my personal suspicion is that this black hose right there, I'm suspecting that that hose has a leak and that's why we're having the issues we are. Watch how long it takes this thing to climb back up. I'm under here together real quick I've already got under here and I've already sprayed that bolt for the strap and hopefully you can see that one that bolt for the strap I don't know what the deal is here why that's got uh, a zip tie I suspect maybe it was close to the exhaust or something I don't know where this goes. It's been a long time since I've done a fuel pump on one of these. I'm gonna get you, let's get you right side up. I'm gonna get you guys here in here on uh, something to hold you up. Get some light under here. We'll get going on this. I don't, I really don't know how far I'll get on this tonight. Because I'm tired. All right, hopefully that's good enough for you to see. All right, this is our filter. Came with two new locking clips. There, this pump is so weak that it has no pressure. Uh, so I'm not gonna worry about 
to leaving any pressure because it, it's the pressure's non-existent i mean we're going to get some fuel dripping down here and at that point i'll probably have to move the camera over but because i don't i'm like right directly under it with my phone and you know um so basically we're going to start out by so oh, we're going to start out by getting a bunch of dust in our face this clamp is basically what holds the thing from moving around all right now these clips let me grab one of these and just show you what i'm doing i think the intent for this tab was to pull on that and have it come out but i've always found it easier to rotate it around to where you can push from the side with these teeth for lack of a better term and then and then pull up uh just pulling straight up i've broke broke them before so i get a start on it by pushing from the back side and i don't know you probably can't even see what i'm doing but uh all right i got that side pushed so it should come loose now i really ought to put some glasses on when i'm under this thing just kind of wiggle this thing back and forth and it should come right out it's out these are something you will want to replace while you're in here and most filters that I've seen come with them now same thing on this one not too sure what we're hanging up on here but I think the hose will come out now I'm actually gonna move you guys over uh, I think I'm gonna get some glasses <laughs> between the dust and the fuel push the rest of the clip out with a screwdriver. I think this is the side that will actually leak the most. Ooh, man. This side here leaks way more. closer now as you can see I do have that one clip on sorry I didn't have you in when I did it now this clip see where the heck this went I'm guessing it went right there there's a hole right here but I will put that on after we drop the tank because uh, this looks to me like this will be helpful if that's not hooked up I don't know if you can see there's a little tiny hole right to the side of this 
You see that little hole? Yes, no, maybe so. I'm gonna guess that's where this brown hanger thing went. And I'm gonna also guess that had they put that back in there, they wouldn't have to zip tie that up there. Hopefully I got this thing set up well enough that you guys can see what I'm doing. So this is how I do this. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do, I've got this jack right here. I've done this a few times before. Um, basically I'm going to be using the fuel filler neck to hold up this side of the tank, take these two straps down, let the tank down with the jack, it'll come down in this area, hopefully give us enough room to do the fuel pump. I do know it will give us enough room to do the fuel level sending unit. So let's uh, move on to that point. I'm going to take these two bolts out. We're going to drop this down. Have a gander. What's nice is when you got glasses on and stuff still comes to your face. Oops, Daisy. I'm going to attempt to slowly let this down. I might have to get me a oops a daisy. Come on. I'm not getting in your way of seeing things, am I? One, uh, one good thing is this happened when this tank is not very full, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. Well, unfortunately, it looks like I am going to have to pull the tank all the way down. Just so you know, if you just want to do the level dealio, you can do it from right here. But uh, our pump is up here at the top of the tank. Fuel level sending unit is right here. So unfortunately, the whole tank's coming down. Uh, I might actually put my, my T across this floor jack. I think it might be a little bit easier on me being a one-man crew here. So this screw right there, we got to get out. It is a 5 16 or an eight millimeter. That's going to allow us to pull the uh, filler neck out of the two out of the uh, side of the tank. Hopefully without ripping that seal because I don't have a seal. You want to be somewhat careful with this as old as these things are getting that rubber seal right here you don't want to rip that and then when we actually stab that thing back in there uh, I use motor oil to help slide it back on I'll get some croil or something and spray it on there hopefully that'll help ease it on out a little bit I douched her down with the old croil my top choice of penetrating oil. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the the T bar on this jack and kind of let this thing down and it's got to slide out. I don't remember what it is. It's about four inches. I'm I'm, I'm if I'm remembering correctly that we got to go that way once we come down 
and I hope that this tank doesn't get all jiggly on me because I'm a one man crew. All right guys, change of plans. As I was crawling out from underneath Frankus here, I started thinking, uh, you know, like I always do, maybe there's a better way of doing this. And I remembered that I have this. So I'm gonna use this trance jack. I can wrap this strap around it. At least I hope it's long enough to get around it. Uh, if not, I'll throw another strap of some sort around it. It's worth a shot. I'm kind of eyeing this up, but it doesn't look like it's going to be long enough, though. Well, maybe it will be if I raise this up. I think things will work out better if I come back from this other way. Get it up in here. Pretty secure. We should be able to slide this. Ooh, actually, I need to almost look this. Well, the whole thing just came down, so we're fine. We're about, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches out of it. This is gonna have to come off. Too. Oh, that's why it's got two. I was only doing one side. There we go. And that's as low as it's gonna go. But. good enough. What I want to do is drag this thing out. This thing is just a vent that I'm looking at right here. It goes uh, all the way up to the charcoal canister under the hood. I think it just pops out. I hope it does because that's what I'm doing. She blows. Now up here on the top, we're dealing with the same type of clips as we did with the filter. I can't, I can't push on the bottom of this. See, like I said, usually when you do that, it break, they break, and this broke. So that's neat. I can't even really see. I'll have to show this to you after I get it out. It, it would be extremely difficult to show this to you where it is. Huh. This does not look like I remember my 89 man. Uh, straight push on thing. Can you see that? I thought this thing didn't have a clip in it, but uh, it's got a couple tabs in it that hold it in. That, I don't know, maybe I'm nuts. Either way, we should now be able to get this tank right on out of here and work on it out here in the driveway. Ooh. Check this out. That's pretty rad. 71 to 73 right there.
So I actually went back under the car and I got this vent back out of there. Reason being is I want to uh, get my air hose out and blow this all off. There's crap everywhere. I stuck some paper towels in the side here just to keep all this crap from going in there. Little toot. I mean, if this stuff, come on, this stuff gets in your fuel tank, it's no big deal. It'll burn it. I'm going to start with the sending unit. thing that was cool is this sending unit actually came with a new ring so we're almost loose almost loose there we go this looks like an original Ford piece. All right. Okay, I'm just going to take and lay these things side by side. this seal out of there. If you double those up, it'll leak. Just want to get all the crap you can out of this lip. I just want to make sure oh, I'll need to go like this. Yep, that'll work. Go ahead and place this. Seal right there. Just go ahead and wiggle that around. But, uh, what's uh, our major malfunction here? It's hung up on something. I see what it is. I see what it is. These two pieces right here. Those things are keeping it from going in. These two teeth. I'm just going to grab my channel locks and push that in a little bit. Those tabs are actually supposed to be locating tabs, but they've been out too far. There we go. Make sure our gasket still stayed. Yeah, those tabs are meant so you get it in the right spot, but they're just bent out a little bit too far, touching the outside of the tank there. that's the original pump oh actually no that's been replaced um, that part number is an F1 which means it's a 91 so it has been replaced and it is a Ford pump man that's there we go that thing's in there 
I think I'm gonna grab the air hose and uh, get in there a little bit before I crack that seal. All right, we are where we need to be. Breaking the seal. Now let's see if my theory is correct on that hose. breaking apart on the bottom it looks like oh, for piss sakes all right my theory was not correct so here it is the whole assembly that hose I don't see any I don't see any leaks in it all right so I'm gonna go ahead and just place this box right here just so we're covering it up just wanted to have a look, make sure we got the right pump, and we do. This sock is gonna be the first thing that's gotta come off. You just take your screwdriver, man. Take your screwdriver and just pry, uh, just pry against this. It'll, I don't know if you've used those shark bite fittings before, but it's kinda, Got teeth like them shark bite fittings to hold it on. And now we can actually remove the pump from the bottom. We need to you don't do these hoses here, hose clamps actually I should say, right here. I'm going to actually reuse these clamps over the ones that came in the box because these are the old school awesome Ford clamps. And my personal favorite clamp. And then we actually need to go get, I don't remember what size this is. It looks like maybe a five or a five and a half. So I need to go get a ratchet. All right, I got my little Pittsburgh set out here. Is it a five? It is. Or maybe it's a standard three sixteenths or whatever. This five's doing the trick though. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set this back up here. I don't wanna drop these screws down in there. on your face like right. so much I'm all right. okay so I got that cage off there I'm gonna go ahead and unplug these and there is a small and a large on those connections all right of course you can buy this whole assembly already ready to just drop in. This is a little cheaper to do it like this. The pumps, these pumps usually come with a cap on them. Uh, there is a rubber piece that I'm missing. Where did that go? Right here. You wanna be sure that this piece here gets put back on the bottom of the new pump.
All right, we're back together. If you're wondering, by the way, what this orange thing is, that's just the return line. That's where the fuel comes back into the tank. Got her all the way back assembled. You just want to be sure that you're not touching on the side of these with the wires. Just wiggle it back and forth. Be sure that when it does move around, it can't touch. Just wiggle it back and forth in the cage. Make sure those wires aren't gonna touch. The way this pump was, they were sticking outward. So I'm pretty sure that they would have touched. Anyway, that's where we're at. Now we can uh, stick this new sock on here. And like I was saying, this is just kind of like the shark bite fittings. All right, she's not going anywhere. It's on there. So same deal on this side, remove that seal. Slowly running out of daylight here. I stopped in the middle to help a neighbor. So these here are, those two grooves are locators for this. Now we got it. I'm not really all that impressed with this fit on this gasket that came with this thing, to be honest with you. So the idea is there's two baffles. Well, actually it's a, it's a rectangular baffle and that sock needs to fit down in there. That was a mess. This seemed to be a little bit off. I just want to be sure this stupid gas gets everywhere it needs to be because I don't want to pull this back out. I don't know. Make sure it started on all three. That gasket it does sit up a little bit higher than the other piece did. And there we are. Okay. We're in. We're good. We're done. Let's go ahead and just put all this crap inside of here. Take a quick five here. Rolling a built bar right here. This is a Utah product, by the way. Salted caramel is my favorite. After the savory taste of the built bar, well, I'm going to climb under here. We're going to slide the tank back under. I'm gonna hook up the hoses, connector, raise it up. Ooh, I need to get some oil on that. Actually, I'll probably put the oil right in here. I don't know what in the world we got going on here, but I got a feeling I'm gonna be taking this tank back up because this is gonna leak. <laughs> but it feels like it's been ripped for a long time. I'm gonna have to order from LMR or something. But 
I'm just going to put some oil on that. Hopefully it seals up, otherwise we'll be dropping the tank again. So, after I shut down, man, <laughs> look how awful this thing is when you get under it. Um, after I hung up the phone there, or after I shut off the video, I got on the phone. I decided, well, I'll just, instead of waiting to order one from LMR, because I got to look in this thing, it's real bad. So, I thought, well, I don't want to wait for LMR. It'll take me clear till the 4th of July to get that stupid thing. So, on a whim, I called AutoZone. They said they can have one at 9 in the morning. There is... Then I called O'Reilly. They said 9.30, you know, 6.00s. Um, and then the guy at O'Reilly said, well, there is a store in Grantsville, which is about, I don't know, 15 miles from here. 10, 10 to 15 miles from here is where the store is at. And I would have to be there in 20 minutes, and I look like garbage. I'd have to get cleaned up, get all this stuff put away. So I'm actually going to get this stuff put away, run over to AutoZone. i got to pay for it for them to ship it here in the morning. So anyway, I'm going to do that. Just kind of button this thing up for the night. Uh, because I, I don't want to have to pull this thing back out. This this gasket is bad. Let me, let me show it to you. So if you see this here, it's just... Looks like part of it's missing it. Oh, it's torn right there. That's where it is. So it's torn right there. And it's torn to right here all the way up to here. So I don't know, a quarter of it, maybe a little over a quarter is torn. And it's been torn for a while. I didn't do that. Somebody probably put this thing back in and it wasn't leaking. But I don't want to chance it. So somebody probably put this back in without putting any oil or anything on it. Because like like we just determined, this thing has been replaced before. It is it had a 91 part number on it. This is an 88, so it has been replaced at some point in time. So I'm going to slide this back under the car. We're going to hook up. Actually, you know I'm not going to hook it up so I can do this while it's out here. Welcome back to the next day, or welcome to the next day. I got the fuel filler neck grommet for this thing this morning, and it is right over here, Dorman 577-502 is the part number. And we're going to go ahead and stab, put this in and then stab this thing back in the filler neck, throw the tank back up, and move on to something else. I just took my air hose and blasted this out, but it looks like there's still some more crap in there. There's some rock stuck in there pretty good. All right. Oh, that's why I'm pulling, whoa, get to get you, that's why I'm pulling this out of here, we're torn, that says Ford on it, so it might be the original, by the way, I found the manufacturer date on that fuel pump that we pulled out, although it was a 91 part number, it had a date of 1993 on it so this pump was done somewhere in that time frame
All right, the key right there was just to squishlate it. We're ready to put the tank back in now, guys. If you're saying to yourself that looks like used motor oil, well it is. I don't want to open a new thing just for this and then stick my finger in it. I changed the oil in the toilet last night, so I had this sitting here. Time for the fun to begin. Three hoses to hook up. And the hoses are different sizes, so you can't mix them up. That one is on. This one needs a clip. She's on. Get this about where. Oh, I gotta hook that one up still. And I'm probably gonna have to uh, put this thing up in the air so I'm gonna do it. Probably not to do this without even seeing what I'm doing. I think it's on. Down. Oh, now I can see it. All right, we're on. We're good. I should have swept out from under here before I got this. Click that. We gotta slide this way. Once it gets moving, it goes. Once it gets past that lip, it slides over pretty good. Okay.
know we can get this strap off. That has been a very nice tool to have, by the way. One thing, don't ask me how I know. One thing you have to do is be sure you don't pinch these lines. Hoses are pinch free. We got one with there, sweet. I think we're all the way in. I don't know. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. That's all right. We're we're really not. Jeez. So it looks to me like we're good to go. We're good, guys. We're good. Now there's this little screw up here. It goes on the filler neck. Just kind of holds it to the tank. And in case you forgot, this is an eight millimeter or five sixteenths. Either one will work. All right, folks, we're done. All right, in this episode, we did the fuel pump, we did the fuel level sending unit, we did the fuel filter, and the grommet for the fuel filler neck. Hopefully that's helpful to all you guys and will help you get your Fox body back on the road if you've got fuel issues. Last summer I also replaced all eight fuel injectors and I also replaced the fuel pressure regulator and I got mud in my hair now. Between, uh, I don't know what it is outside right now. Feels like feels like 95 to 100. So I'm sweating. Dirt, mud, hair, yuck. Have a good one. Take care. Thank you so much. If you haven't yet, please subscribe uh, to, to uh, keep up on my content. This is going to be an ongoing, long project. So... I'd like to have you along.